he has, um, has left. Senator Hoven. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Secretary, uh, good to see you. Thanks for being here today. Uh, just want to start off with a couple comments uh, regarding the uh, President's budget um, relative to the Farm Bill. Uh, first, I want to echo my concern. You've heard it from the others here today, and that's crop insurance. Everybody, uh, you know, throughout our state, uh, all the producers are telling us that uh, crop insurance is absolutely the number one priority. Number one. And so I think the $8 billion reduction there does not work. I, I think that we're going to have to address that as we uh, work on a farm bill. And I think really that goes to what we're trying to accomplish, which is the strongest possible uh, safety net uh, for our producers on a cost-effective basis. And that's what we're shooting for with crop insurance. So again, that's an absolute priority, whether it's the commodity groups, uh, whether it's producers throughout my state or you know, throughout the country. That's what I'm hearing. That's what all of us are hearing. So again, really want to emphasize that point. Uh, and uh, so we have work to do there, and we look forward to doing it uh, in this committee. Um, the other thing I want to mention right at the outset is uh, university-based ag research at North Dakota State University. We've just built, uh, largely with state money, uh, an ag research greenhouse, state-of-the-art, incredible. Uh, NDSU and our other universities are doing amazing research uh, in agriculture, which is bringing enormous productivity, not only dramatically increasing um, uh, productivity on the farm and the ranch, uh, creating jobs, creating uh, exports, a favorable uh, balance of trade in agriculture for us. So incredible opportunity there. That's a real priority and a tremendous leveraging of the federal investment through what the states provide on that university-based research, as well as the private dollars that are raised and, and go into um, university-based ag research. So really want to emphasize that to you uh, as well. And then uh, picking up on something that uh, Senator Johan said, and it's true, Senator Thune and I did tease him about corn prices being higher under your watch than his or Secretary Schaefer's, but uh, all three of you have uh, done a fine job and we appreciate the work you do. Um, but we're working, uh, myself, Senator Thune, Senator Baucus, uh, certainly Senator Conrad and others, uh, on the whole Acre Sure program and how do we develop a commodity title package overall that works well, again, with crop insurance being the, the centerpiece. With that, I'm going to switch to biofuel. Unless you have some advice for us as we tackle this farm bill, and we really want to lead that effort here in the Senate, I believe we have a very strong committee on a bipartisan basis, basis with a lot of background in agriculture and really need to lead writing that farm bill. Any advice or input you have relative to any of those comments? Uh, Senator, just, j just one comment. I, I think we've, uh, you know, you've heard me talk about crop insurance and, 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 and our view. We obviously recognize the importance of it and significance of it. I think the question is, you know, how much of a profit margin do you need in order for it to be sustainable? That's obviously uh, something we can talk about. But let me, let me focus on a comment that you made that is extremely important in my view, and that is the issue of ag research. Uh, Agricultural research uh, has not received the attention that it deserves uh, by, the by the country. Uh, we've seen significant increases in a lot of other research areas uh, within the federal government and, and in other, other areas, but ag research has been flatlined for, for an extended period of time. The President's budget does propose an increase, a significant increase in the competitive grant process of our ag research, our external opportunities, the opportunities that you alluded to working with universities in the private sector. I would strongly encourage this committee to take a look at the historical data that suggests that productivity in agriculture is directly related to the investment in research and that we need to really do a good job of supporting that research opportunity. Uh, there are countless reasons why it's important, but I appreciate you bringing this up because it's something that is often not talked about enough in my view. Well, I'm glad you brought up that point on the competitive grant piece and we'll absolutely look at that. That may fit with exactly what I'm talking about. So we'll take a look at that, and I thank you for that. Um, I, I do want to go back to, uh, again, this, you know, we're talking ag research. It's about food, fuel, and fiber. I see this as an opportunity. I see this as a real job creator opportunity, just like you started your remarks with that comment you know, about creating jobs to rural America. No question about it. Uh, back to what do we do now with biofuels, I really feel like in, in our state, uh, we started a program that we provided uh, some assistance to get blender pumps out there. 
And it's really worked. We have, you know, I think more blender pumps than any state in the nation now. We have got to somehow get blender pumps. We've got uh, something like 10 million flex fuel vehicles on the road. That's growing. That's a simple thing is to make these vehicles flex fuel. We've got to get EPA to simplify the rules and get the higher blend allowances. But we've got to do more with blender pumps. We've got to do more with the liability laws. And we've got to do some more with the equipment, I think. And I guess how can you help us with legislation or other ideas to advance this thing? We're kind of stuck here. This is going to be important to get more uh, ethanol in the fuel supply, and particularly as we get into the cellulosic second generation stuff. So what help can you give us in, in either moving some legislation or getting some things going here? Senator, I think uh, the key here is for you to, given the fiscal constraints that we're operating under, whatever programs you decide to fund, making sure that it, they have enough flexibility for us to be able to use it creatively for the infrastructure that's necessary to get the fuel to the market more conveniently in all parts of the country. We're currently using the REAP uh, program for blender pumps, but there has been some resistance to that in Congress, and we would encourage and work with you uh, to sort of break down that resistance so that that flexibility in that program can be can be created and, and it can be adequately funded to, to reach our goal. We wanted to put 10,000 blender pumps uh, out into the marketplace in a relatively short period of time. That's hard to do if, if there are restrictions on what we can do with the REAP dollars. Secondly, again, it, it, the, the, the flagship project or program in our, uh, our rural development job creation uh, tools, toolkit is the BNI program and to the extent that we can create flexibilities in that program because that's the one that's going to be supported and funded uh, probably more extensively than some of the other programs and, and the more flexibility there would be helpful as well. And I could uh, work with your staff to get some of that language that, that we should maybe look at? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.